it's probably going to irk some of y'all light-skinned folk out here that want to claim y'all mixedness so damn bad that you're willing to fucking throw blackness under the bus and throw, uh, you know, the black identity under the bus. Um, but I shan't care. You know what I mean? I can't really care about y'all who are, who are doing foolishness. So I want to come for you, Mr. Tay Diggs. I want to talk about you, bitch, because... I just need the mixed fetishization to stop, okay? First of all, his first book was called Chocolate Me, okay? Where he talks about being a brown skin or darker skin person. Bitch, I didn't read it and I didn't, I didn't check for it at all because I feel like whenever a person starts to call themselves chocolate or vanilla and shit like that, I kind of get in my feelings because I'm just like, we is not food, girl. We is not consumable. Like, we are people. So, um, you can liken your skin tone to whatever you want. But at the end of the day, to objectify yourself in that way kind of makes me uncomfortable. Um, and so, I did not check for, cho for, for chocolate me. I didn't check for that. And I wasn't trying to be shady. I was just like, probably not here for it because I know Tay Diggs is a colorist ass motherfucker. I could tell from some of the other shit that he done said um, about blackness, um, talking about his mama knew he was going to bring home a white girl. Girl, how? You know what I mean? It's like, how? Because you was anti-black because you was full of massage and war, bitch. So, anyways, I'm over here catching this uh, Tay Diggs interview, and he's over here talking about his little mixed son, Walker Nathaniel Diggs, bitch. I was dead at that name. I was like, girl, okay. And I guess like the other shit that got kind of got me dead is the fact that, and I'm not trying to come for this little white, this little, uh, this little mixed black baby's name. And that's the other thing, mixedness, like mixedness and blackness are not mutually uh, exclusive in that you can be mixed and black and you can be mixed and not black and you can be black and not mixed, but the fact that any mixed person, especially a person that is mixed with a white parent, um, with, with a white and a black parent, um, it's kind of just like, girl, it's like, why do you so badly want your son to be perceived as mixed? And that's the other thing. It's like, it would be one thing, you know, if he said, I want, and it's not even that it would be another thing. It's just that it would be a whole nother piece of dog shit to dissect if he had said I want my child to be seen as colorless you know what I mean if he would have said that shit all these bleeding heart ass hippie ass folk would have been like yes race is a social construct like raise your baby outside of that and I'm and I'm all for raising your children outside of the idea um that blackness is bad but I'm not I'm not here for anybody trying to raise their kids outside of uh you know the realities of white supremacy you know what i mean it's kind of like okay girl i feel you like you don't want um you know your child to be caught up on race to be color struck and zha zha gabor but at the same time you have the responsibility as their parent to be mindful of the fact that perception perceived blackness is real and i think one of the things that i read from a person and i can't think of their name as irking me they wrote something to the effect that people who push to be only seen as mixed or only be identified as mixed seemingly have blackness happen to them. Um, and in ways I, I identify, in ways I don't, I want to say that throughout my life with my identity, with my with my own want to distance myself from blackness, with my own want to um, identify and be perceived as mixed, there were so many instances where anti-blackness was prevalent as fuck. And I feel like in so many ways, you know, I think a way to kind of get out of this m thought, you know, that, you know, I'm the other, I'm you know, I'm, you know, like, a, I'm negative, or I, uh, I'm unworthy, or, or, or rather, internalizing oppression in that way, I think by my own indoctrinations, or, or rather, by, like, the ways in which I move through society, the ways in which my mother, 
um, would talk about blackness or would claim blackness but would be disparaging towards darker skinned women. There's all these things that came into my mind where I was seemingly okay with someone being anti-black because deep down inside I knew I was more than black. So it was one of those things where it was like, you could be saying some racist shit, but I'm not going to clock you because that would make me seem more black to be angry about some anti-black shit, if that makes any sense. So for mixedness, for, or for a lot of mixed people, they will not get involved in anti-blackness discourse. They will not talk about colorism because as far as they're concerned, if you're talking about blackness, they're quantifying that in their mind as they're talking about niggas. I ain't no nigga. I'm not identifying as a nigga, so I can't be who they talking about. Or rather, I shouldn't be offended because I am not just black or only black. And I feel like that's kind of the tone that I'm getting around Tay Diggs. I'm feeling like in ways, you know, he's trying to set the stage where, yes, my son is brown, you know, and maybe perhaps you perceive him as black, but girl, I don't want that, you know, because I think... The reality is Tay himself don't really be talking about anti-blackness or the politics of being black. His little book, Chocolate Me, girl, you know what I mean? Sit down, Tay. Because I feel like at the same time, Tay is a darker skinned man. But really, though, Tay has been rich and had coin for a while. He is acceptable. He is an acceptable dark skinned black cis man. And I feel like in ways he trying to, you know, remind you. Adina Menzel, that's Adina Menzel baby. And I have like I have not seen no pictures of Adina Menzel with this baby. I only seen her him with the baby, and maybe that's my own fault. Maybe I ain't been looking. But I swear every time I see pictures of his son, I ain't seen too many. I only see Tay holding the baby. So I'm just like, okay, girl, all right. And it makes me wonder what they broke up for. I'm kind of just like, I'm like, Adina, did you leave him because he was a color struck Negro and you was feeling played? I'm like, or Adina, did you leave him because you just wanted a brown baby so you could just do some racist shit or just be a racist and be wild and nobody's going to clock you? Because there's a lot of reasons why interracial couples um happen. And I'm not going to say it's all good. I'm not going to say it's all positive and it's all liberating. I'm not going to say that at all because I myself have been in several interracial relationships where... Ain't nothing good came from it. Not to mention, I've gone through so many interracial relationships where accountability was the end of the relationship. Where when I let somebody know, girl, that's problematic. Or girl, that's oppressive as fuck. Or girl, that's anti-black. That's violence. As soon as I let these motherfuckers know, they was gone. Gone with the wind, not fabulous, bitch. I'm telling you. And it was one of those things where you could easily internalize that shit and be like, whoa, maybe I shouldn't say. Maybe I shouldn't call people out. Maybe I shouldn't, you know. And you get so caught up and you don't really think, wait, why the fuck did I choose to out myself as someone who's resistant to this fucking society? Why did I even hesitate for a moment? Do I really give a fuck about this person? You feel me? Because at the end of the day, if you love somebody and if you love yourself, you're going to let them know what the fuck it is. And if they leave, they fucking leave. But you need to know that like at the end of the damn day, it's not up to you to be bringing nobody to their liberation. I feel like that's something I needed somebody to tell me, bitch. I feel like someone needed to tell me that shit. But for a while, I think when you first get involved in politics, you really do want to save a nigga. You do. You want to save somebody. You might want to save your little white boyfriend who racist or his little white family that's racist. And that's why he racist. He's not really racist, girl. It's his family, girl. Okay. Huh. These interracial relationships be draining, bitch. Because you be like, what is go like? What is going to transpire? Like, how am I going to get played? Am I going to get played? Am I am I am I going to get played on a psychological level? Are they going to be physically like anti-black? Are they going to be verbally anti-black? You know what I mean? Like, what is the what is the tea? And it is hard, you know, dating men of color and dating non-men of color. It's just like, damn. You know what I mean? I think interracially dating a lot of times like you might want to believe that you know love can conquer all but i think the reality is you know love i feel like such a catch-all such a scapegoat for how we're supposed to feel how we're supposed to be how we're supposed to act towards each other and i think the reality is is love takes on many forms you know sometimes loving someone is getting the fuck away from them you feel me sometimes love is distance bitch so i don't know like i don't know i just kind of 
went on a tangent because a lot of people have been asking about these interracial relationships. I'm like, yes, I'm like low key. I think like on perhaps in my in my father's eyes or my mother's in my mother's eyes, I'm sure she was like, we're two black folks having children. But I'm sure in ways to my dad, like he was like, I'm with this white woman, you know what I mean? In some capacity, because I feel like that's always what it is. I feel like no matter how black people, how much people believe my mother's blackness, I think at the end of the day, when you're white passing, it's very hard for someone to not fetishize you or to not other you or to not exotify you. Even if they down for black love, I feel like their ideas of black love can be colorist and color struck as fuck. So I don't know. I think like when people talk about interracial relationships, I'm sitting here kind of like, I done it. I did it. And it was trash a lot of times. And I'm not going to say that being an, uh, relationship with a black uh monoracial man has been um any better i just think in ways like dating outside of my race a lot of times has led to so much fucking confusion and for the first time me dating another black person you know who is like a cis uh who's a cis woman um identified she and i like we just had a rapport that be like you know what I mean? Because she sees massage noir. She sees anti-blackness. She understands capitalism. She understands ableism. She she kind of can understand and not only understand but fucking sympathize. When someone don't really feel you, the sympathy be fucking lacking. And I feel like with my partner, like she kind of, she's gone through some of the shit that I've gone through, you know? And some of the shit that she hasn't gone through for whatever reason, she's still sympathetic to my situation and where I'm coming from and why I do what I do and why I act the way I act because trauma is real as fuck. Um, and love is layered, you know? Loving, as I said before, sometimes loving somebody is giving them fucking space. Sometimes loving somebody is, you know, it's hard, it's hard. And I think, uh, I think it's very pie in the sky to think that love is always fun and whimsical and 500 days of summer before all that bullshit happened at the end but it's really not you know i think sometimes especially uh black love you know what i mean black love is radical as fuck and i don't think we talk about the ways in which it's so you know it's just so lost you know it's so hard for us to actually find black love or actually see the representation and i just think uh getting back to my point about um mr diggs he is super invested in the humanity that is found in mixed people. And that's just the reality. I think that when people, and it's, I've had this experience where people will look at me for a, a, a little minute, screw face, you know, maybe they're trying to figure out where to fuck my wig and my, uh, my wig and my real hair intersect. I don't know, bitch. But I know that when they ask me, what are you? What are you mixed with? Where are you from? Sometimes I don't even ask that. Sometimes they'll just be like, girl, are you Tonganese? Are you Tongan? And I'm like, no, girl, I'm not. You know, and they'll come with all these reasons why. But it's like in that, in the middle of them guessing my race, trying to figure out what I am, there's humanity there. They're interested and intrigued because nine times out of ten, when we see a person, or not when we, I think when white people particularly see a darker skinned person or even a person that's more uh, associated with like a phenotype of African descent, perhaps we'll say that there's no questioning. There's no, you know what I mean? It's always when there's something that's being exotified that they ask and they question. And I feel like in that moment, even though it's humanity, it's still that gross feeling where they're trying to categorize you and it's really nasty and it's feeling kind of icky. Cause you feel like, you know, now you got to kind of out yourself, talk about your family life and, before I had the language of white passing, I would just say, my mom is black, but she looks white. Or I would just say, my mom is white because I wouldn't want to have to say my mom is black, but looks white and quantify that shit with going into her facial features, her makeup. It's just kind of like a lot, you know, to be kind of breaking down. You know what I mean? It makes you feel like a dog. Like I, got, I need to have my papers. You know, my mother is part Shih Tzu, but I also have a Pomeranian in, in, in the third branch of my family. No, I shouldn't have to do all that. But again, Tay Diggs is like fighting so hard for that humanity, for that questioning of like, what he, what is your son? Like, what is he mixed with, you know? And then try to cover it up by saying, well, I don't want him to say I'm black and have people assume what his parentage is. Who cares what your parentage is? You know what I mean? It's just some color struck ass shit. Like, I don't want him to be out here, you know, in this anti-black ass world identifying as black. Because honestly, 
I don't think too high of blackness, not to mention the fact that I'm going to say it's disrespectful to the white parent that they're not being honored by being mentioned. Really? At the end of the day, if I never mentioned my mother, I'd still be black. You feel me? It's like I'd still be black. Yes, I'm a lighter skinned person. Yes, I am privileged in that way. But at the end of the day, I'm still a black person. And I feel like you don't need to know my lineage to respect me and to care for me and to actually treat me like a person. But as far as Tay Diggs is concerned, all y'all mixed people that's light skinned or, or brown skinned or whatever the fuck... You know, uh, whatever you're looking like, you should be claiming all of your identities all the time. And I feel like when I was doing shit like that, I didn't realize how othering it was for me to be sitting here romanticizing my father's immigration, my mother's, you know, my, my mother's mother and her relationship with her family and all this and that. It just seemed like too much to be giving people for no reason, you know, other than distancing myself from blackness or rather self-exotifying and othering myself and I feel like that's what Tay Diggs wants and it's just one of those things that it's like so prevalent in Hollywood it's so prevalent prevalent like that girl that played um I can't think of her name I'm sorry but the girl who played uh, I want to say Shayna in Gem and the Holograms the reboot and they they said that the the father of the light-skinned girl that they cast was irked and was saying anti-black shit, was coming for black women being angry. And the thing is, black women had OD, not like collectively had, not collectively, black women never collectively come together on some shit, unfortunately, because like, where, where's the space? Where's the space for us to come together? There is none. But in spaces where there were black women speaking and raising awareness about, um, you know, the, the, the whitewashing, uh, or rather the light skin washing, of a dark skinned character or a darker skinned character, you know, this darker skinned black man had no empathy, like no understanding where, black, where darker skinned black women were coming from. So that's why I don't really feel Tate Diggs because he's sitting here on this show with Hoda, little light skinned ass, this, this white lady, and this darker skinned woman talking about it was hard being a darker skinned man. And I'm like, girl, I don't, I don't think it, it was for you though, girl. I'm sorry, but girl, I've been seeing you since you was young, girl. I remember you from Stella, girl. Like, girl, you been out. You have an illustrious career, bitch. You are doing okay. And the worst part about it is you're not using none of your motherfucking clout, none of your accolades, none of your shine to actually bring anything to darker skinned communities. Um, uh, excuse me, darker skinned black communities where folks like are burgeoning actors, burgeoning artists, all these things that he could be fucking doing to talk about, uh, or, or he could be talking about. And yet, this is what he's talking about: his little mixed baby, mixed me. LOL. And I also want to say, bitch, if you catch a look at this book, Mix Me, the main character has a OD big ass red afro and some green eyes and OD light skin. And I was just dead as fuck because I was like, bitch. Like you said you was inspired by your dad, by your little son, right? And the main character is like this uber like uber light skin like lighter than your son green eyes and red hair and i'm sitting here like this ain't about your son bitch this is about that ambiguously racial bitch over here and it's pandering as fuck to i think to, to women of color who are mixed let's say you're mixed let's say you're identifying as mixed who do have a black parent and don't feel like you want to uh, identify as just black but what's the uh, what's the issue with identifying as black you know what i mean what's the issue with that what's the issue of Saying yes, I am mixed, but I'm black. Cause I feel like that's I, I feel like that's a real ass identity to have. I feel like you can be mixed. You can have two parents of different racial backgrounds. But at the end of the day, I feel like the perception is important for you to know in terms of privilege or not. You know what I mean? I feel like that's important. And I feel like mixed people who are OD light skinned don't want to talk about it. Because I think all they all and myself included, all we hear. When we hear someone say, oh, well, you're mixed, you're not black, we really think that some, our black, our black account, like, we go log into our black account, it, girl, it's negative, someone just, someone just snatched my blackness, girl, it's, it don't work like that, okay, if people's not believing you, bitch, then maybe it's because you fucking anti-black, like, it's like mixed folks don't even take the second to think. 
maybe I'm anti-black as a motherfucker. <laughs> you know what I mean? Y'all, like, we don't we don't take that space to really think about the ways we be anti-black, the ways that we be othering uh, ourselves and other black folks. We don't think about the ways in which we talk about blackness in the negative way. We don't think about that shit. We so quick to talk about darker skin folks is the problem with colorism, but we don't self-assess. And I feel like this is a call to all my light skin folks out here claiming mixedness. I see you, boo. And I'm not mad at you if you want to claim to be mixed. That's fine. But it Bitch, if you, if you black, if you black, say you black. Stop trying to fetishize, or, or rather, stop trying to uh, self fetishize yourself. Like, stop. There's no, there's no reason to do that. But again, I feel like the people that's gonna hear this shit and not get it is gonna come for me and be mad, and that's fine. But I feel like self awareness is key when we talk about anti blackness, when we talk about being lighter skinned people, when we talk about being mixed, when we talk about the privileges and the advantages we have because we are not readily seen as black. We have to be self aware of how the fuck we coming across and what the fuck we saying and doing. Because a lot of times I was saying anti black ass shit and people was clocking me and I was getting mad. Why was I mad? No self-awareness, no understanding of empathy, true fucking empathy where I really fucking sat the fuck back and really analyzed what the fuck I'm doing to create a, 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 a situation where someone's doing this to me. You know what I mean? Never taking a moment to really assess. And I really feel like that shit is so important because fuck, you know, damn Tay Diggs out here just cooning.